The UN's independent inquiry on Ukraine has found more evidence of torture used by Russian forces, both in Ukraine and in Russia. The inquiry first reported on torture used by Russian forces to the UN General Assembly in 2023, and their latest update confirms that the worst is in fact occurring in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I sat down earlier with Vrinda Grover, UN Commissioner and member of the three-person inquiry on Ukraine, to discuss the inquiry's latest findings. Thank you. Now, can you explain how torture is being used by Russian forces? The commission has in its latest oral update in Geneva uh, stated that torture is being deployed by Russian authorities in a widespread and systematic manner. This is something that the commission has said earlier also. What we have found through our investigation is that There are common patterns that are prevalent in the detention centers in the Russian Federation, as well as in the large penitentiary colonies that have been set up in the occupied Ukrainian regions by the Russian authorities. The geographical location across these regions point to the widespread nature of use of torture. And the reason why we say that there is a systematic element here is that there are certain practices and certain elements that are common. One, for instance, is that there are harsh practices that are used repeatedly in all detention centers. And when those those are being used in the Russian Federation, they are replicated in the detention centers that are set up or uh, put into use in the occupied Ukrainian territories. Then you have certain, we found that there are certain personnel the personnel of specific forces of the Russian authorities, which are used to inflict torture. It's also been seen that there are uh, the people who are targeted for purposes of torture, the aim of torture, both to extract information as well as to punish, are common elements that can be seen across uh, where torture has been inflicted. Uh, The purposes of torture, as well as the Uh, people who are targeted. Then you have the recurrent use of sexual violence by Russian authorities as an element, as a form of torture. And therefore you see this torture being used not just against women in villages when when they are occupied by Russian forces, but also in detention centers by Russian authorities, the threat of rape, uh, electric shocks to genitalia, forced nudity, sexual violence as a form of torture is a recurrent feature that has been found in these places. Now, in your inquiry, how is the evidence of torture acquired? Well, our investigators collect first-hand information. They speak to the victims, either directly or remotely. And these victims could be places in places which have been occupied, Ukrainian territories occupied, or with prisoners of war who have returned due to the exchange. While, and these interviews are conducted and we always cross verify and corroborate uh, the information received from co-detainees, family members, uh, medical reports, forensic analysis uh, of the uh, information received, the evidence received from directly from the victim. While engaged in this, The investigators and the commission follow the do no harm principle. It's a victim centric approach to ensure that there is no re-traumatization of the victim. Now, these findings are horrific, but I think a big question that's still lingering is what happens next? So how does the UN or the international community hold those who have engaged in torture accountable for their crimes? Well, the accountability is really at the heart of the inquiry and the investigation. And accountability is central to our work. Uh, It's also something that the victims have repeatedly expressed that that justice should be done. So therefore this evidence that is collected, the information and material that is collected is collated very carefully to form evidence so that there is accountability that uh, that takes place both at the national level as well as at the international level. And the necessary, the commission works closely in coordination with the necessary 
uh, agencies and actors at the national and international level for purposes of uh, providing evidence. Thank you so much for the time today. Thank you for having me.